Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us D. Ragunandan and we are going to discuss the UK elections. You, this has been a very strange election because after all Theresa May had a majority and she could have run for another three years with this government. Her whole idea was that she will get a bigger majority. That has not happened. So do you think that she's going to pay the price for this? Well, this morning it was beginning to look as if she would. Uh, although now the Conservative Party seems to have come around to saying let's go with what they see as the lesser of two evils and rather than rock the boat again and have another election inside the Conservative Party to decide who is going to lead it and have a further division inside the Conservative Party which will just add more chaos. I think they have decided to go with a bad bargain, continue with Theresa May until the elections is over. But what this means basically I think is that there is no chance now of Theresa May leading the Conservative Party at the next elections. Or even more than six months possibly. Possibly. But leaving that aside, yeah. this election has been a rude shock to the Conservatives who are initially they had a something like a 20 percent lead. Right. We are talking about a hundred plus majority That's over right. the Labour Party That's right. and a huge uh, commanding lead in the parliament is the only reason for being able to negotiate Brexit better. Now, you're going to get a weak government. You're going to get a government which is really hanging on by its teeth by virtue of a coalition with the Ulster Unionists, not exactly the best of people to have with you. Quite. And with this now, the whole argument for Brexit being negotiated more strongly has gone. Uh, she is in a weaker position vis-a-vis uh, -vis Europe. Uh, she does not have the stronger mandate that she was uh, demanding. She has a weaker mandate at home. And whatever she negotiates with Europe now, she is in a weaker position domestically to implement those uh, policies. Because clearly the domestic mandate is for less austerity, uh, more public spending, goes against the basic conservative ideas, as well as the lines along which the Conservatives were thinking of negotiating with uh, the Europeans. The second thing I think is that this puts paid to the idea of a hard Brexit. Uh, the Conservatives will now have their arms twisted uh, in a different direction. They cannot go the way Theresa May was uh, arguing for because they will be in a weaker position both vis-a-vis -vis Europe and uh, domestically. I think the biggest miscalculation was, as you rightly said, having a majority already in place, but looking for a much bigger majority, playing on what the opinion poll said was an extremely weak labor opposition, and thinking to capitalize on that. Uh, but now, having gone into the election, finding out that she has handed labor uh, and Jeremy Corbyn in particular, uh, a great brand image uh, which they didn't have before these elections. That brings up the most important, uh, really the most important result for Labour. Yeah. Jeremy Corbyn has really uh, strengthened his position enormously, vis-a-vis -vis all those who are attacking him. He came on the back of a Labour majority within the party of younger people, people who had come in to rejuvenate Labour as it were, but resisted tooth and nail by the parliamentary party and what would be called the labor establishment at that point of time. What people are saying, the Blairites. The Blairites. He has de effectively demolished them in this election and has really brought out that labor has to shift back to the left. It has to get an elect electoral base. And he's been able to attract a huge amount of support from essentially the youth. There are just two points I'd like to mention on this. Uh, one is, Certainly, uh, Corbyn has confounded his critics. His critics on the labor right, his critics in the media, his critics among the political pundits, all of whom had written off Jeremy Corbyn, had described him as the weakest leader labor had ever had, and of being the biggest obstacle to labor re emerging uh, in the mainstream of British uh, politics. And he has shown all these arguments to be wrong, that he has in fact been able to rejuvenate 
the Labour Party, which the Blairites were not able uh, to do. He's brought the youth back uh, to Labour. Uh, I think this has been because Jeremy Corbyn forced a repositioning of the central debate of this election. Theresa May wanted this election to be about how do we exit from the European Union. Jeremy Corbyn transformed this from that debate of what kind of Brexit will we have to what kind of Britain will we have. And the debate therefore changed to what kind of domestic policies do we have, what happens to social service, what happens to public spending. And he refocused issues on this and the British public has veered around to his point of view and particularly if you look closer at the results, a large section of the working class which had shown signs of drifting towards UKIP have come back. The other party, the Scottish National Party seems to have fared relatively badly. They've yes. lost both to Conservatives and to Labour. Yes. What do you think this indicates? As far as the SNP is concerned, I think the Scottish electorate, this is true of the British electorate as a whole, has been quite tired of having elections forced on them. And the Scottish electorate was even more scared that a very strong mandate for the SNP would mean another referendum uh, in Scotland. I think this is partly the reason for uh, the Scots not wanting an extremely strong presence. But on a more serious note, I think the results that we saw, which gave the SNP virtually 100% of the seats in Scotland the last uh, time around, were also freakish. I think one should accept that they were freak results. And one should not compare the present uh, election results using that as a baseline. Coming the, to the other issue that you that you talked about, the, the Corbyn and Labour, essentially Corbyn was being challenged inside the Labour Party and as you know Corbyn was always the outsider, yes. supported peace, supported uh, again, you know, all forces against armed intervention, supported the Palestine liberation struggle, supported that you know we should end occupation uh, of Israel. All of these issues now is what was unthinkable for the British political centre as it were. Corbyn has been a part of that. Yes. Do you think that this would also mean a relook for British foreign policy, particularly with respect to and military adventures in West Asia? Uh, it may, it may not. Uh, and the reason I'm saying it may not is because I think Jeremy Corbyn has done a tremendous job at these elections in restoring the centrality of the left uh, to labor politics and prevented labor from shifting further to the uh, right. They've got 262 seats uh, in parliament now, which I think was inconceivable uh, just a few months ago. But 262 is still not 326. And there are many, even within the labor left, who concede today that in order to get back into a winning uh, proposition, uh, Jeremy Corbyn will also have to embrace uh, sections of the uh, uh, Blairite uh, labor in order to uh, cross that threshold, which at the moment at least, he seems to have difficulty in being able to. Maybe time will tell and maybe he will be able to engineer a movement further to the left. But after the attacks in Manchester and also yes. London, he's the only politician who stood up and said, this is because of what we have done ourselves in Libya. Absolutely. This is what we have done in West Asia. And also focusing on reduction of health services means that you could not handle emergencies. Reducing policemen, you could not really uh, yep. monitor the people you needed to. So his attack on what happened, on the particularly on Theresa May, who's home secretary Absolutely. during all of this period, was also very different from a mainstream politician in England, right. who generally have always sided, saying, "Let's all close ranks. That's These right. are very bad people from outside. We are doing all this. We have nothing to do with it." And the first time recognition that the UK was responsible for what happened in Libya 
and also part of the global, sure. however reprehensible sure. the bombing in Manchester Absolutely. or the uh, London uh, bridge attack was. The point is there is also a complicity of having fostered this. Jeremy Corbyn is the only leading UK politician Absolutely ever to right. have said this. Absolutely right. And Jeremy Corbyn has been the only politician to have said this, maintaining his own record of being the longest lasting outsider in British politics. In fact, the Labour has shifted away from this right. position, they seem to have come back That's right. partially to the position. Right. Labour occupied for a long time, at least in the yeah. 40s and 50s. Just on the last note, you remember Jeremy Corbyn was in India for the social forum in That's which right. both you and I were involved. That's right. And his speech is not very different from what he's saying today. Absolutely. So Jeremy remains where he was. It's really the British politics which seem now to have partially come back yes. to him. Would you accept this as a genuine assessment of what has happened? Yes, I think so. I think Jeremy Corbyn has re-established uh, the positions that the left of the Labour Party used to take. The point that you made, I think, is right. People have overestimated the tendencies in uh, European politics of what was perceived to be a shift to the right. They were really a movement of frustration of the people. And if the right were voicing some of those concerns, then they shifted to the right. But if there was a uh, strong voice on the left, then I think we would see the people moving back. So this content of globalization being That's attacked right. by the right in That's the absence right. of the left. That's right. Jeremy Corbyn has shown that That's this right. is possible. That's Thank right. you very much, Raghu, for being with us. This is all the time we have today for News Clicks, this episode. Keep watching News Click for further episodes and also watch us on YouTube.